Well, Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, tonight, we have an opportunity to voice our support for the vast majority of our residents who didn't get swept in the disorders of last month. And I want to start there because I want to put into perspective the fact that we have 17,500 council tenants and on Monday night, the police officers said that no more than 500 people were involved in the riots, of which perhaps just under half of them came from outside this borough. So we are, our action has to be in support of the vast majority who behaved, the vast majority who were horrified, petrified, and frightened. What you know about Wandsworth is that you know where Wandsworth stands. Whatever side of the fence you sit on, you know where, what, what side, where Wandsworth stands. Even our opponents would concede that this council has a clarity of sticking by the people it serves. And the way we responded on the 8th of August was a further proof of our commitment. It wasn't about politics. It was actually about putting people first. And that is what our residents expect from us because they know, and a number of members opposite and on this side have said that the events of 8th of August was an assault on all of us. One resident said that these were dreadful attacks on our neighbors. Well, if they were that, and if we think they were wrong, what should we do to support the neighbors who were attacked? The community affected and horrified by the events was looking to this council and anyone else who was in leadership for leadership. Councillor Boswell said, I think, people looted because they could. Well, they could, so they looted. Is that right? Is that something we should shrug our shoulders and accept? Well, I'm not suggesting she did. I am asking you a rhetorical question. I'm glad you rise to that. But what happened there was antisocial behavior on a mass scale. And at that point, one has to look at our tenancy conditions and say if anything there applied. Well, it applies to antisocial behavior. It's a policy we have had for many, many years. And this particular variant of the policy has been around since 1996. Each tenant who's got a tenancy is explained the consequences of signing up to a tenancy. I am told they spend about an hour being told what it is that they are taking on. I'm also told they take home a DVD making sure that they don't forget what they have been told. No tenant is in doubt what obligations they are taking on for themselves or on obligations they owe to their neighbors. And let's also examine whether this tenancy is something that councils dreamt up and foisted it on the neighbors, on the tenants. Councilor Ellis mentioned earlier that, in fact, this policy was crafted by enormous amount of engagement with tenants and, and they, in fact, crafted half profit, I guess, they were all consulted. They all voted to accept it. We around this uh, chamber debated it and accepted it and implemented it. Our current policy is very clear and very straightforward. It actually says don't mess around with Wandsworth. It says you don't mess around with your neighborhood. And because of that clarity of message, our estates are such good places to live. But tenancy is not a one-sided contract. It is not about council's obligations alone. It is about tenants' obligations as well. Not only to the council, but to their neighbors, to the community of which they have become part. We have not jumped to a knee-jerk situation in, in this case, as some members opposite say. The, if the, policy, the policy of being hard on antisocial behavior is, is 
Councillor Carpenter, you had an opportunity to speak. I thought you kept silent because you half believed what your colleagues were saying. Councillor um, Carpenter, Councillor Carpenter, please be quiet. Councillor Carpenter. The Council's firm approach on antisocial behaviour, and echoed by yours, Mr. Mayor, in this chamber, is, is important in giving a clear message. We have, in the last three years, evicted 22 tenants for a number of acts of antisocial behaviour. But before those 22, scores, scores of notices seeking possession have been issued. And by the way, members opposite need to remember that this is not an eviction, this is a notice seeking possession. They care to do their homework about this bit of it as they did about other bits of their speeches. They would have found out that this is the beginning of a process which probably takes about eight months and in fact is signed off eventually by a county court judge. You might think that we shouldn't rely on a county court judge, but on this side we do respect the law and the right of the courts to in fact oversee what we do. We on this side accept that if the county court judge says we are not, you are wrong, we will accept that judgment. Ours is not to second guess what the judge says. Ours is to implement a condition that tenants have signed and they have asked us to, to create and ours is to pay, play fair with their tenancy condition and say, well, we will, you give us the responsibility of keeping that, of, of, of a, uh, enforcing a condition, we will, when necessary, enforce it. Having gone hard on all these 22 cases, I don't think my colleagues or I wanted to go particularly soft on looters. I don't think actually residents in Wandsworth wanted us to go soft on looters. Well, Cal can, excuse can, me, just a moment, Councillor Govindia. Councillor Carpenter, if you want to speak in this debate, you may, but you only will speak after Councillor Govindia. Do you wish to speak in this debate? I'm happy to speak in the debate, yeah. You will, and after Councillor Govindia, please. Please don't interrupt him anymore. Well, let's get back to the events of August. This was an occasion where I heard sort of somebody say, ordinary people frightened switching to switch off lights in their own homes whilst looters ran rampant through estates where they lived. Now, if that's a true reflection of what happened in our estates, should we just stand by and say, well, it happened? I don't think so. I don't think it is our role to sit on our hands or our duck our responsibility or leave tough decisions to somebody else or to run away from responsibilities or even when the going gets tough to say well let's give up. This was the time to show leadership and actually Mr. Mayor we are not the only council to do it. There are a number of other councils who have committed to look at every case that comes across them to see whether their own tenancy conditions would be invoked or not. Mr. Mayor, just to end by sort of talking the tale of two Tonys, I suppose. There was a Tony once who was hard on the causes of crime, and he gave rise to a much of our thinking on antisocial behavior. And that is what has shaped not only this council's thinking, but many other councils' thinking. It would appear that now there is a Tony, never a new labor, therefore not a surprise to me, but actually going soft. All this stuff about this individual case, innocence until proven guilty, seem like glib remarks from barrack room lawyers, frankly. This is a process that will be overseen and validated by a county court judge. If the, in, the individual concerned is found not guilty, there is no intention that we would continue to pursue the, the, the notice seeking possession. That has been made clear time and time and time again. The party opposite refuses to understand it or is unwilling to understand it. I guess for reasons other than support for an individual and for more for, I suspect, having gone soft on, on crime and I think lo losing 
their support for the victim that once they had. Councillor Belton. This wouldn't be the first time that I think the uh, majority party don't really listen. Um, I'm not quite sure how many times, I'm not quite sure how many times we've made it clear that as a weapon of housing management, eviction is perfectly valid and that would cover everything that you're talking about. Indeed, our uh, very uh, motion says that in one of the clauses. Um, I'm just not sure how many times we can repeat that without you continually going back to it. I'm also not sure how many times we can say those who are guilty should be punished. But you will say, remember when I started that I said defence of the innocents is really rather important. And defence of the innocents is not always easy to do and is not always courageous. Uh, sorry, it's not, or, or often needs a lot of courage and it's not done, as Councillor Govindia suggested, for ulterior political motives. Do you think it's easier for me to stand up and say, hang them, shoot them and flog them, or actually we should be just to those who are the innocents? It's very clear which one is the courageous position, which one is the political position, and which is the one that calls for some nerve. I was talking about the innocents, you are not. I can thank Councillor Tracy for pointing out how terribly difficult it is for the council to control an 11, uh, 10 to 17 year old. She can't even manage it with all the weapons um, and staffing available. What makes it so clear that uh, a grandmother, perhaps, uh, forget this particular case, who happens to be uh, tenanting their 18-year-old son, all six foot six of him, how easy it is for her to control. Are we saying, of course we're not so... Can I have a point of personal explanation? I mean, perhaps Councillor Belton will, will allow me on this occasion. Um, I do think equating a child in care um, who is perhaps in temporary accommodation with a foster carer, who has only had them under their care for a very short time, to be expecting the same level of control as one would expect a parent to exercise on their child um, really is a bit much. And I think it's, uh, uh, it, Councillor Belton ought to withdraw it because th this particular foster care is dealing with a very troubled youngster. I'm sorry, uh, the point is you are sharing how difficult it can be. You're applying a blanket policy which wouldn't allow for that. In some of the cases, it will be difficult. And you, particularly you, Councillor Tracy, as a parent of many, will know, well, four is quite a few, sorry, um, uh, will know that actually controlling all their actions all of the time is uh, not very easy indeed. I dare say once or twice you didn't manage it. <laughs> Madam Mayor... Uh, Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, if I may continue, can I just talk one or two things about the contracts as well? The contract which, uh, which the tenants want to have ti made tighter, can I say that a very senior representative of the tenants who sits on the housing committee and is one of my constituents, and I'm sure you know whom I, I mean, said in the recent panel meeting that they hadn't expected, despite her working on the agreement, by the way, hadn't realized that it might be interpreted in this way and had assumed that all the cases would be about situations on the estates. And what is more, I know about the 22 evictions, Council of India. Give me at least the benefit of occasionally doing my homework. And I've checked with Councillor Evans, oh, sorry, with the director, I withdraw that. I've checked with the director and I asked him to produce any evidence at all of any case where we had evicted, where the case was about criminal activity not on the estate or in the immediate neighborhood. And he hasn't got back to me yet. I've gotten back to him once or twice and he said, no, I haven't found any yet. 
So we don't do this. It's not something part of our regular procedure, Councillor Gabindia, and how could it be? Because we have no process to, do, to handle it. This is just a special one-off, and it's a one-off that we're using against the innocents, and I'm concerned about that. And it's a one-off where I'm making a very definite moral point. I don't expect many of you to see it straight away, but I hope that over a period of time, you do recognize that actually justice has to be administered in a proper and process-driven way and not arbitrarily to suit the needs of the political parties in power at a particular time. Thank you, Councillor Belton. The motion now before the Council is that the amendment proposed by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Govindia as tabled at this meeting in relation to evictions be approved. Please indicate by show of hands those for the amendment. Thirty-seven for the amendment. Those against? Twelve. Any abstentions? The result of the voting is thirty-seven for, twelve against, and no abstentions. The amendment is carried. The matter now before the council is a motion on the agenda as now amended concerning evictions originally proposed by Councillor Belton and seconded by Councillor Daly. Same numbers? Read. No, we've a... Yeah. Yeah, same numbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The amendment motion is therefore carried. Thank you, Councillors. That concludes the business for these this evening. Good night.